Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today I'm taking your questions on transmission problems, rear sway bars, more training and more. This is episode 185 of the Humble Mechanic Podcast. All right, so you may know that things are a little different. The lighting's weird. The background is completely different than you've ever seen before. That's because I'm actually standing right in between my new Ben Packed lift. You can see the uh, safety yellow and black right behind me there. I've been installing this this past weekend, and that means everything else in the shop is shoved to the other side, including the studio. So that's why things are a little bit weird. But moving on, if you want to get a question on a show like this, be sure to email me, charles at humblemechanic.com, right down here at the bottom. Put question for Charles in the subject. Ask your question right at the top, mash the enter button a few times, then give me the details. And if you don't see your question on a show like this, check out the quick videos playlist on YouTube where I take one question per video. All right, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is CRP Automotive. CRP deals in a ton of OE maintenance and repair parts, timing belt kits, suspension components, and even fluids. In fact, they make the factory DSG fluid for Volkswagen and Audi. So check them out at crpautomotive.com. And finally, if you want exclusive videos from me, as well as discounts to places like Eurowise, MT Knives, Black Forest Industries, Sonic Tools, and Eastwood, check out the crew membership program. There's a link down in the description. It's a great way to help support the show as well as save yourself a ton of money. All right, with that wrapped up, let's get into your questions. First one comes from Martin. Hey Charles, came across your YouTube channel and I love the content. Thanks Martin. I would like your input on an O2 Jetta transmission problem. At cold start in the morning, I have no reverse. After driving a couple blocks, it would work fine. After the engine warms up, I would start having trouble in drive. It seems like it would go completely into neutral when I came to a stop and would have a surge when I take off from a stop. I also noticed it would upshift hard at times and downshift hard at times. It's strange. I don't have any codes awaiting your response, Martin. So you probably will never get any codes. Traveling back in time, oh, 15 years or so ago, we had the O2 Jetta with the AG4 transmission. This transmission was notoriously awkward, right? It had emission strategies that took a really long time to go from, if you were backing out of a spot and reverse, back up. If you went from reverse to drive, it seemed like it took forever to finally engage drive. Also, if you were coming to a stop, and then let off the brake and hit the gas again, it would have a really bad shift as well. This was completely normal on that transmission, but Martin, it sounds like you got something a little bit more serious going on. First thing before you do anything else, you need to make sure that the transmission fluid level is correct, as well as the type of fluid is correct. If it's got the wrong fluid or the level's not right, you're wasting a ton of time messing around with anything else. Also, valve body failure in these transmissions was pretty common as well. You could try and rebuild it, maybe take it out, disassemble it, clean everything, and put it back together as a way to save some money and temporarily fix it, or maybe permanently fix it, who knows. But you need to start with checking the fluid level first, above all. My guess is that your fluid level is pretty low at this point. That's why things aren't happening correctly at all when it's cold, but you're still having issues when it's warm as well. So, Dude, start with the fluid, get that straightened out, see how it behaves. But again, make sure not only the level's correct, but the type of fluid you're using is correct as well. All right, this next one actually came in from YouTube and I can't for the life of me find the comment. So whoever asked it, I'm sorry, but it's a question I get a fair amount. The dude basically works at a dealership and he's mad or frustrated because they're not sending him to training. And there's so much at play for this question, I wanna try and tackle as much of it as we can. First, let's look at it like it's the dealership's fault. They don't want to send you to training. Well, if you're working at a dealership that doesn't want to send you to training or a shop that doesn't want to send you to training or a company, well, no matter what you do, that doesn't want to send you to training, you need to figure out why. Are they just too cheap? They don't send anybody to training. They don't care about you knowing these things. If that were me and I worked for a place that didn't care about me getting better, my training, then I would really look hard at leaving because what's the point, right? Yeah, you're gonna make money and yeah, it's still a job, but like part of the point is getting better at our job, keeping up to date with current technology. And for a lot of us, if we don't go to these kind of trainings, it becomes really challenging to keep up with our job. So let's look at it from that point. Are they that? 
Now let's look at it in a way that maybe hits a little bit closer to home. What's your role in not being sent to training? Are you a good technician or a good employee? Or are you the type that just walks around bitching that I don't get to go to training ever? And then the guy next to you is like really awesome and does all the stuff that he needs to do so he gets to go to training. See where I'm going with this. So you need to make sure that you're not the one, and I hate to point fingers, but you really need to look right here and make sure that you're not the reason that they're not sending you to training. If the dealership sucks, go. It's roll your box, it's got wheels for a reason, lock it up and go somewhere that cares about you getting better as a technician. But take a deep, deep, deep look and make sure that the actions that you're performing aren't the reason that they're not sending you. You know, if I have two technicians and one gives it his all and works his butt off and then the other one, you know, she's a slacker and just doesn't care, has a really bad attitude, I'm gonna send the guy that gives it all before I send the one that doesn't care, right? So it, it's an investment in my business as a shop owner to invest in you to make sure that you're top notch trained, but if you're not going to give that back to me, then why am I gonna send you? On the flip side of that, if you are that great employee that's still not going, time to bounce. So before you bounce and get pissed at the dealership, do some soul searching and make sure that there's not more you can do like your online training or you know learning outside of the dealership training level working online and finding classes finding classes from bosch or baru or whoever right whoever makes car parts most of them offer training as well exercise your own brain and your own internet right and do some training on your own that way you're not relying on the dealership so i know that kind of is all over the place but my main point of that is do some soul searching and make sure you're not the reason that they're not sending you to training because i've seen it before and dudes get pissed but unfortunately when you have to make a decision on who to send to training you want to send the person that's going to pay off the most for everyone and a lot of times the guy with the bad attitude is not that person all right next one comes from ed as you might remember, I had an H&R rear sway bar on my TDI Jetta Sport Wagon. I was pleased with how it performed handling wise. My new Mark 7 GTI Sport is of course a ton more fun, but I was wondering if another rear sway bar might be a good investment. Keep in mind, I don't want to monkey around with changing the stock springs. Thanks, Ed. Ed, that's a great question. And they do make a couple of rear sway bars for your car. Uh, 034 Motorsport seems to be the one that if I were gonna buy one, I would probably get this one. It looks like a very well-made piece. Everything I've ever bought from 034 has been top notch. As well, I really like that they have grease fittings on the bushings for the rear sway bar. So uh, I got a link down in the description if you wanna check that out. But there are other companies, H&R makes one as well and they're, they're gonna all be pretty good, I think, especially when you're going with the top named companies, O34, H&R, New Speed, and, and that. Now, I don't have much experience driving these cars with or without an aftermarket rear sway bar, so this is where I really like to turn to you, the audience, and post down in the comment section of your experience, if you have it, with a Mark 7 rear sway bar. Help Ed out, let's help him make a really good decision. 260 bucks or whatever they cost isn't cheap, it's not a ton of money either, so I guess worst case, if you hate it, you could probably sell it to somebody else that might like it as well. But Ed, I would look really hard at the 034 Motorsport one, because like I said, if I were gonna buy one for a GTI, a Mark 7, that's probably the one I would go with. All right, got time for one more. This one comes from Logan. I have an 01 Audi TT, 180 horsepower, five-speed manual, and I'm having difficulty setting the secondary air readiness monster <laughs> or monitor. Um, I have no codes for secondary air, however, I have one for an intermittent clutch switch and plausible signal, which I do not believe to be related. I've had multiple cold starts and allowed it to run for several minutes before driving, hoping it would pass, but no success. Any information is much appreciated. Well, Logan, this is a rabbit hole of an issue for sure. So, secondary air, the basics of it is it's an electric pump on a Volkswagen and the pump turns on and it blows air across the catalytic converter to heat the cat up faster. This puts the engine into closed loop so it can monitor all the fuel and basically cause lower emissions much, much quicker. On those, it really wasn't like a super challenging system to set. Um, now, if this were like an 05, 06, 07, 06, I guess, 06 Beetle, uh, God, it was a nightmare, I would tell you, good luck. But on those generations, it's actually pretty easy to force set. 
if you have VACOM or a, a scan tool that you can force readiness on, you're going to go to basic setting 77 and you're going to run it with the car idling and that'll force run the test. But if secondary air won't set, there's a couple of other things that we really need to look at. We need to look at our fuel trim and see what it is to make sure we don't have a vacuum leak. Remember that secondary air isn't just the pump and the combi valve and the solenoid and all the piping and tubing. It's the airflow meter. It's the oxygen sensor as well. And I've seen all of that stuff cause problems with secondary air setting. As far as your clutch switch, yeah, don't worry about it. That's not a problem at all. So what are you going to do if you don't have a scan tool? Well, unfortunately, you're probably just going to have to keep trying it until it finally passes. What I would do is I would, it, me anyway, I would find VAGCOM and I would hook VAGCOM up and I would force run the test. If you don't have VAGCOM, well, I highly recommend it, uh, but if you don't have VAGCOM or OBD11 or something like that, try and find someone local, pay them 30 bucks, let them, you know, borrow their VAGCOM cable for, for a half a day, play around with it and run basic setting 77. In fact, you can run through all the readiness and that should force all the tests to run and pass or fail. Then if you get a failure, we can go start diagnosing it that way. Are your vacuum lines good? Is your combi valve good? Is your pump good? Is your airflow meter and O2 sensor good? A couple of really common things, those pumps like to come apart and you'll hear them really, really loud. Also, all that ducting is plastic. So you may be experiencing some plastic degradation at that point. And they had vacuum lines that are notorious on that generation car for breaking and crumbling. If you, you just look at them wrong, they tend to crumble. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Questions, comments, you know what to do. Sorry about the weirdness in the studio. You can see like the sun changing behind me. It's very distracting, but uh, be back to normal hopefully next week. If you like this video, throw the thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe right here on YouTube. Don't forget to ding the bell for notifications or over on the blog at humblemechanic.com. Don't forget if you want exclusive content, as well as VW Audi training manuals made by me and discounts to places like Eurowise, Black Forest, Eastwood, and I'm working on another one that's really awesome I'm super excited about. Check out the crew membership link down in the description. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Snapchat. Oh, and if any of you are going to Wookiees in the Woods, make sure you let me know. Make sure you come say hi to me. I will definitely be there. Uh, not sure what I'm driving yet, but we'll work that out the week before. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.